What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying your lives to the fullest today. Today we are reviewing the 2023 Nissan Maxima SR. Huge thank you to Mustafa over at Priority Nissan of Chantilly, Virginia for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you guys are interested in this particular Maxima or any Nissan product, I'll be sure to have Mustafa's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. First, let's talk about the exterior and performance. And if you guys cannot tell, I found the only shady spot in the entire parking lot. Normally I film my videos over there, but the high today is 90 and it's gonna be relatively humid, hence why I parked it in the shade. But back into the review, like I mentioned, this is a 2023 Nissan Maxima SR. And this particular one has been painted in super black. But we're gonna start over here at our headlights. So with the Maxima SR, you guys do get LED headlights with high beam assist. You also get LED daytime running lights and this is your LED daytime running light strip. And then towards the bottom of your front bumper is where you will find your LED fog lights. Now, working our way to the center of the front end, you guys can see that this has a very aggressive front end design, which flows very nicely from the front to the back. You guys will see all the different sporty elements as I point them out, again, as we progress along into this video. But you guys do get a gloss black mesh front grille with your Nissan logo located at the center of the front grille. Just above your Nissan logo is where you will find your forward facing camera. That forward facing camera goes along with your 360 degree view camera system that comes standard on the Maxima SR. And then just below your gloss black mesh grill, you get a gloss black U-shaped trim piece. And then you get another trim piece that kind of connects both sides of your front bumper together. So it starts about right there. You can see that little body line. And then you get this other body line. Again, that is another gloss black trim piece. It looks really, really sweet. And then you also get a gloss black lower grill. It's also kind of that mesh color. You get gloss black outer grills, one over there and then one on this side as well. You get forward facing sensors with the Maxim SR and I've only found two here on the front end. So you get one about right there and then the other one is about right there. And then last but not least at the bottom of the front bumper, you get another gloss black trim piece just to kind of finish off the front end nicely. Now working our way down along the side with the Maxima SR, you guys do get these 19 inch gloss black wheels wrapped in 24540 Goodyear Eagle F1 tires. I'll give you guys a view of the tread pattern on those tires here real quick. That is what the tread pattern looks like. And then one thing I wanted to point out, and this has to do with the suspension with the SR. You guys do get a sport tuned suspension with retuned dampers, stiffer springs, and a larger front stabilizer bar. I'll try to give you guys a view of what's going on under here, uh, but really that's about the best that I can do. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that. The only, or one of the only options on this particular Maxima SR are these $245 splash guards, which can be found at all four corners. So about right there, and you can see that they are body color. One thing that I really like, or I think is pretty cool about the Maxima itself, like it doesn't matter what the trim level is, is take a look at that sloping windshield design. That thing gives this a, that or that windshield really gives this thing a very aggressive and sporty look to it. And I think it is pretty cool. And when you get into the interior, you guys will see what I'm talking about. It really adds to the sporty feel of the Maxima. But working our way to these side view mirrors. These side view mirrors are gloss black and you do get integrated LED turn signals. They're also heated. The driver's side mirror is auto dimming. I do want to open up the door and I'll show you guys where the blind spot monitoring is. So if there's a car in your blind spot, this will light up in amber. So that's where you will find your blind spot monitoring system. And then about right there on the passenger side. So again, the blind spot monitoring is on the inside of the vehicle, not on technically the mirror itself. And then at the bottom of the mirror, you have a little camera. So this side view camera, as well as the other one on the other side view mirror, work with your 360 degree view camera system. That again comes standard on the SR trim level. I do wanna show you guys a little side profile of the Maxima. I'm not sure how well it's gonna be uh, picked up on camera because it kind of like blends into the shadows nicely, which I think is pretty cool. But you guys do get gloss black window trim at the top of the uh, windows, which is kind of interesting to me. You get chrome window trim at the bottom of your windows, which again, gloss black at the top, chrome at the bottom. I'm kind of surprised that they didn't just do another gloss black trim piece below these windows 
but you know it actually kind of looks good and it kind of breaks up just the all blacked out look which i honestly think kind of looks pretty good you also do get body color door handles however the uh front two door handles are the only ones that get the keyless access function so again rear doors do not get keyless access but the front doors do and then you do get body color aggressive side skirts and that is a look at the side skirts i'll try to give you guys a better view of them you can see they are relatively aggressive and let's say you got this car in red you got this car in white you guys can option for your side skirts to stay black just something that i thought i'd point out i'll put the price of that on screen opening up your fuel door all you gotta do is click on that fuel door will open up premium fuel is recommended however you do not get a capless filler neck and then there is what your antenna looks like you do get a rear window defroster and then that chrome trim flows through pretty much all the way to the bottom of your rear glass do a little three-quarter angle of the maxima from this perspective again guys i think this thing looks really good and i'm kind of surprised i guess by the lack of sales i could say or I, I think I could see why this thing doesn't sell quite as well as you know you would expect it to just from the looks and I guess one of those major attributions to that in my opinion would be that it has a CVT which I'll get into later on in this video but I really think that this thing should have had like an eight-speed automatic transmission or something like that and I think it really would have sold very very well but back into the back end you guys do get this sport spoiler and that is a look at the sport spoiler I'll give you guys a couple of the different angles of it you guys do get gloss black badging back here with your maxima badging and your sr badging at the center of the trunk you have your nissan logo as well as your third brake light this piece right here is also gloss black just below your nissan logo and just a tad bit to the left is where you will find your backup camera again the backup camera works with the 360 degree view camera system if you guys want to open up the trunk make sure you have your key fob in your pocket press on this little pad about right here and the trunk will open up and there are a couple other options back here really there's only like three options i believe on this vehicle and two of them are back here so this does have the 90 dollars sliding trunk organizer which is this thing right here as well as this does have the 430 dollars sport mat group and what the sport mat group gives you guys are these sport floor mats to try to give you guys a little bit of a view of move that out of the way so it says maxim on it and it's kind of like a stainless steel piece on the floor mats themselves honestly i think it looks pretty cool and then you also get a trunk mat with that package you get a trunk net with that package and a first aid kit and one of the really cool features also are these bag hooks so these bag hooks also come with the 430 dollars sport mat group so let's say you go to walmart uh, and you're going to be doing some sporty driving on the way home and you don't want your groceries to go all throughout the interior you can put these down and then connect your or put your grocery bags on here like that on that so you get four hooks so this is one hook this is two hook and then on this side you get your third hook and your fourth hook i think these are really cool and honestly i'm kind of surprised that other other manufacturers have not copied Nissan with this idea because honestly it's pretty ingenious in my personal opinion but honestly you have a quite a bit of storage space or back here for whatever cargo you guys are gonna throw at the Maxima and then underneath here I think you might have a spare tire so underneath all of that you got your spare tire you got your jack and all the necessities to change a flat tire if you know god forbid you end up do getting a flat tire but that's really uh, about it for the trunk. Now I'm gonna close the trunk. You get four sensors back here as well as two reflectors. So you get a reflector on the passenger side and a reflector on the driver side. Again, you get four sensors. So that's one, that's two, that's three, and that is four. Let's take a look at a rear diffuser. So the rear diffuser is kind of a mix between a satin black uh, color as well as a gloss black color. So what I'm pointing out to you guys right now is the gloss black rear diffuser. However, you guys can also get the optional $370 rear diffuser in chrome. It kind of gives you like four fins, I believe. I'll put a picture of it on screen right now. Uh, but again, that is in chrome. Whereas if you guys don't option anything, it is that gloss black. I personally think the gloss black would look better than the chrome. But again, that is just personal preference. And then you get a quad tip exhaust system, which honestly, this exhaust sounds pretty dang good. 
let me know what you guys think of Nissan killing the Maxima for the 2023 model year, or I guess the 2024 model year, because 2023, again, is the last year that you guys can get the Maxima in the flesh with the V6, with the sporty design, with it being a sedan. Again, it might come back as an electric crossover. It might come back as like an electric, like sedan looking like Prius thing. I honestly don't know, but again, let me know what you guys think of Nissan killing the Maxima for 2023, but let's move into performance. Popping open that hood reveals that 3.5 liter V6 that makes 300 horsepower and 261 pound feet of torque. It is made into a Xtronic continuously variable transmission for a zero to 60 time in 5.7 seconds. If you guys were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 20 miles per gallon in the city, 30 miles per gallon on the highway for 24 miles per gallon combined with front wheel drive. Honestly, I think those fuel economy numbers are really darn good, especially considering you get a decently powerful V6 that sounds really, really good. And it is honestly pretty darn quick the only nag to the maxima is the continuously variable transmission i really think that they should have put an eight speed automatic transmission in this thing i think that would have attracted a lot more buyers because i've seen in some of my other videos people are always talking trash about the cvt so nissan i wish you guys would have put the eight speed or a eight speed automatic in the maxima you didn't it is what it is uh and again this is the last year for the maxima so again let me know what you guys think in the comments down below but Let's move into the interior. Before we move into the interior, I wanted to show you guys a couple of the functions on the key fob. So starting from the top, you have your remote start function, then you have your lock function, your unlock function. Pressing and holding on this button right here will open up your trunk, and then all the way at the bottom, you have your panic button. Like I mentioned, you do get keyless access on your front two doors, so all you gotta do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, and then press on the button on the front two door handle. So that will either unlock and or lock the vehicle, dependent on if the vehicle is unlocked or locked. So if I press Press that button now the vehicle will lock so now it is locked however if i press that button again now the vehicle is unlocked so taking a look at the interior with the sr these uh or this seat combo color combo is called charcoal with premium ascot leather seats and diamond quilted alcantara that is a look at the diamond quilting Alcantara, but we'll get to that in a minute because I wanted to show you guys what the door panel looks like. So starting from the top, you do get some vinyl wrapping in black with some burnt orange accent colored stitching. You get an aluminum door handle, two memory seat adjustment settings. You get this gray trim piece on the door handle or panel as well. Here are the controls to control your side view mirrors. They are power adjustable. This will restrict your passenger window privileges. You get your unlock and your lock functions. The front two windows are uh, automatic up and down, but the back two windows are not. You get a nicely padded and leather wrapped armrest with some burnt orange accent colored stitching. You get a little bit of miscellaneous storage space at the bottom of the door panel, but really not all that much. And then you get a spot right here. You can set a Deer Park water bottle. You get a side marker light slash reflector all the way at the bottom of your door panel. And then with the SR, you guys do get a 11 speaker Bose sound system. So that is what your Bose speaker looks like at the top of the door panel. And then you get another speaker towards the bottom of the door panel. And then working our way into the interior, you guys do get a brushed aluminum Maxima door sill. That is a look at the door sill itself. And then working our way into the interior, this is what the front two seats look like. So these are the zero gravity seats. You do get an eight way power adjustable driver seat and a six way power adjustable passenger seat. Again, that's what the seats look like. So from about like right here all the way down, these are all, or this is all your diamond quilted Alcantara. And then the rest of the seat itself is leather trimmed with some burnt orange accent colored stitching. One thing I wanted to point out about these, uh, or at, at least about the driver's seat is that you do get a thigh extension. So the driver gets this thigh extension. That seat over there does not. So driver gets a little bit more adjustability than what the front passenger gets. But again, that is a look at the front seats. Now let's step into the interior and let's see what the Maxima is all about. Boom. First thing I wanted to say, what looks really, really sweet on the Maxima SR are these paddle shifters. So these are like magnesium looking paddle shifters. They actually have a good feel to them. They don't feel like plastic. 
They actually sound like metal and they look really sweet. And they are a steering column mounted paddle shifter. So when you turn the wheel, they actually stay in place, which is really, really sweet and just gives this thing a really sporty vibe. Again, I wish they put an eight speed automatic in this rather than the CVT. However, I have not tested the CVT yet. So it might actually surprise me uh, if it's good or if it's bad, whatever it is, I'm gonna tell you guys. But like I mentioned, you do get keyless access. So you do get push button start. Make sure you have your key fob in the interior. Push your foot down on the brake and then push to start. And then you get that decently aggressive startup uh, when you fire this thing up. This thing has already been running, so I'm going to rev it and give you guys a couple revs so you can hear what it sounds like from the driver's perspective. You get a nice induction note. This motor actually sounds pretty darn good, but let's start over here. That is to dim the gauge cluster, that is to brighten the gauge cluster, and then that is to reset your trip information. Coming down a bit, that's gonna pop open the trunk, that's gonna turn your blind spot system on or off, and then that is to uh, turn your heated steering wheel on or off. Then you have a foot mounted emergency brake. You get these beautiful sport pedals with the brushed aluminum and rubber trim. They look really sweet. Um, you do get a manually tilting and telescoping steering wheel by pulling down on that. So you can see steering wheel is coming towards me. It's going away from me and it also goes up and down. That is what I mean by tilting and telescoping. I'm going to show you guys what the turn signal stock looks like. It's uh, blocked by this massive paddle shifter, which looks again really sweet. Um, not only is this your turn signal stock, this is also your headlight control stock. So that is headlights off, that's headlights automatic, that is parking lights on, and then that is headlights always on. And then right to the right of that, you have your fog light control. So right now the fog lights are off, now the fog lights are on, but usually I like to leave the headlights in automatic. Let's take a listen to the turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like on the 2023 Maxima. And then on the right hand side of the steering wheel, you have your windshield wiper control stock. So this is what the steering wheel looks like. It is leather wrapped and then you get some Alcantara inserts on both sides of the steering wheel, kind of more like on the inside of the steering wheel, but it just gives this thing again, a very sporty vibe. The leather feels super high quality. I think I pointed this out, but I'm gonna point it out again. You get some more of that burnt orange accent stitching on the inside of the steering wheel. I also love the way the steering wheel looks with its flat bottom design. It looks so, so sporty, like I mentioned to you guys, but let's take a listen to the horn. That is what the horn sounds like on the Maxima. Now, we'll go throughout our controls on the steering wheel, shall we? So this is to switch between your different AM, FM, Sirius XM, USB, Bluetooth audio, all your different audio sources. This is to volume up. This is to volume down. And then these buttons, as well as these up and down arrows are to control your seven inch productivity screen, which I'll get into here in a second. This is to speak to the vehicle. This is to bring you into your phone on the infotainment screen. And then you do get adaptive cruise control as standard with the SR. This is what the steering wheel or dash looks like, excuse me. Now let's move into the dash layout. So on the left-hand side of the dash, you have your RPM gauge. On the right-hand side, you have your speedometer. Then you also have your fuel gauge and your coolant temperature gauge, all analog. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you guys is with your fuel gauge, you can see your fuel pump is pointing to the left-hand side of the vehicle. That means you would fill the vehicle up with gas on the driver's side. But now let's go throughout our productivity screen. So right now, that is the ambient exterior temperature that's the speed limit sign that is the current time that lets us know uh, about our driver assistance stuff so right now that's our lane keep assist stuff and then that is blind spot monitoring on digital speedometer readout right now it's displaying the compass it's also displaying the res uh, preset radio station and it's giving you the radio station which it's on FM at the moment then that is your odometer so this vehicle has 13 miles on it that lets us know that we are in park it also lets you know what gear you are in and then that lets us know that we need fuel uh, and then that usually is your fuel range but right now we are so I guess we're not really that low on fuel but right now it is so low on fuel that it's not even giving us uh, a fuel range but let's go throughout the screen so starting from all the way down here on our home screen this is what your home screen looks like I'm gonna click over one to the right that brings you into your audio stuff one more to the right that is your compass one more to the right this is like your drive computer we'll go one more to the right that brings you into your fuel economy stuff click over again these are your different driving aids 
one more time to the right, you get your speed limit sign, then you get your tire pressure stuff. This is like your sport gauges, so it gives you your speedometer readout, as well as your oil pressure, and I believe that's like your trans temperature, or trans fluid temperature, and then that lets us know how much fuel we are using, like dependent on what RPM we are at. So you can see as I raise the RPM, it goes uh, further up on that hockey stick looking gauge, and then click over one more time to the right, this is your different warnings, which is basically gonna tell me that I need uh, fuel. I guess it's also letting me know that my door is open. And then clicking all the way to the right, this is your settings menu. So you can go in between your different settings through here if you wanted to. So all you gotta do is click okay. And then you can go into your driver assistance stuff, which I'll show you guys the driver assistance features. This is one screen of the driver assistance features. And then this is the second screen of your driver assistance features. Let's go into chassis control. I'm actually kind of uh, interested. Okay, so you can turn active trace control and active engine brake on or off. And then we'll go back. This is also like a back button. It lets you know on screen what the buttons do. Uh, so you can see exit or back. So if I click on this, that's gonna exit me back into this screen. And then click over to the right. That brings me back into my home screen. You do get a vinyl wrapped dash up top here with some of that accent colored stitching. You get four HVAC vents on the dash. That's one, two, three, and four. In between the two um, HVAC vents up top here, you have this button to turn your hazards on or off. That's what your hazards sound like. And then this piece above the dash is actually leather. So this is leather wrapped uh, just above the dash with some of that burnt orange accent colored stitching. And then the rest of the dash is vinyl wrapped. Just wanted to clear that up. Now I'm gonna close the door and let's go throughout the center section. So this is your home button, which will bring you into your home screen. This is an eight inch infotainment system with wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto connectivity. That is what it looks like. You get your CD player up top here. You get your home button, you get your map button, you get your audio button. This will switch between day, night, and auto mode. So right now that's night, that's auto. That's to go back on a track, that's to go forward on a track. That is your back button. This is your volume knob. <laughs> This is your tuning knob. If you press on this button right here, that will bring you into your sound settings. So you get your bass, then you get your treble, get your balance, you get your fader, and then it goes off. One thing that I really like about Nissan's is that they have this instant camera button, which will pop up your 360 degree view camera system. Right now that's the forward facing camera with guidance lines. If I threw it into reverse, that will pop up my backup camera with guidance lines. Just something I thought I'd point out. Click that camera button again, and it goes in between your different uh, camera screens. Click it one more time, and that will bring you back into this home screen. So right now, this is what your home screen looks like. You get your time, you get your audio information stuff. You can go home if you wanted to. You can go between your different pre previous destinations for your built-in navigation system. You can search a point of interest, yada, yada, yada. This will bring you into your phone. So all the buttons at the bottom of this screen are all your shortcut buttons which will shortcut you into your different information so that's one information screen that's your second information screen then you can go into your audio stuff this is what your audio screen looks like we can go between our different sources you get your am fm cd xm usb 1 usb 2 bluetooth audio and your auxiliary jack click over one more time to here you can go to your bluetooth audio stuff etc and then click back into your home screen that brings you back into this screen then you can go to your built-in navigation stuff this is a wi-fi hotspot capable vehicle and then we can go in between our different settings so this is one setting screen that is your second setting screen and that's really about it for the infotainment system this is where it lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off. You do get a dual zone climate control system with VSR. I'll show you guys what the climate system looks like. That is what the climate screen looks like. You got your temperature, you get your fan speed. It lets you know where the air is pointed and then that's the passenger's temperature. So click that off, screen goes back off. And then that is a look at what the uh, climate control stack looks like. That's your push button, start button. This is your gear shifter, it's leather wrapped. So you get uh, go all the way down into drive. If you guys want to go into manual mode, you flip that over to the left, pull down to downshift, push up to upshift, and then you can also control the transmission with the steering column mounted paddle shifters. Opening this little door up is where you'll find a USB-A port, a USB-C port, or that's the USB-A port, that's the USB-C port, and then that's your auxiliary jack. You also got a spot you can set a phone right here as well. I wonder if my iPhone 14 Pro Max will fit down in there. Let's see. So, okay, my 14 does not fit in there, but an iPhone 14 uh, would, I think, fit in this little spot here. But you can also fit it down in there uh, if you really wanted to. 
but there's like a designated phone holder about right here that my phone does not fit in. You get two cup holders and then you have these controls right here. So you can go in between your different things on your screen. So instead of touching the screen itself, you can control what's on the screen with this little knob right here. So if you guys wanted to, let's say, go into camera, you click up and then you click right here and that would bring you into your camera stuff. Pretty cool. And then you have your back button. You also have a home button which will bring you instantly home that will bring you instantly into like your navigation stuff but again we're going to click that home button and that will bring you back into the home screen you have two different drive modes on this vehicle you have normal mode and you have sport mode so you have a sport mode button right there now we're in sport mode click that button again that puts us back into normal mode and then that is your traction control system on or off you do get heated and ventilated front seats both with three levels of adjustability i already mentioned this but you get heated and ventilated front seats and you get a heated steering wheel <laughs> Excuse me. You get a nicely padded and leather wrapped center fold down armrest with some accent colored stitching. Opening this up, you got a spot you can set some coins. You have a 12 volt outlet and you have quite a bit of storage space down in there. I'd say about 45% of my forearm fits down in there, which for a vehicle of this size is pretty respectable. You also have a spot right here. You can set some business cards if you wanted to. So if you had like a fat stack of business cards, you could set them in there, no problem. Or I guess you could set credit cards there if you wanted to as well. And you can also set a pen right here. So this could honestly be a business vehicle. So you could set a pen here and some business cards right there. Pretty sweet. But closing that back up, you do get a lockable glove box. See, how, yeah, a ton of storage space in that glove box. I have not seen a glove box that big in quite a long time. I mean, tons of storage space. Um, and then right here, you have a designated spot for your owner's manual, but you see how deep that goes down in there. There is a ton of glove box storage space uh, back in there. And then the passenger door panel looks pretty much the exact same as the driver door panel. You get a auto dimming rear view mirror with your universal garage door opener located at the bottom of it. So if, you, if your house has three different garage bays, you can open up those three different garage bays individually with these three different buttons you also have a great taco holder right here if you wanted to set a taco uh, you can also put your sunglasses up there as well and then one thing that I thought was really really cool with the Maxima SR is that you guys do get this dual panel panoramic roof so you get one panel up here and then you get one panel back there basically this back panel does not open up but the shade will retract which I'll show you guys that now so now the shades are both uh, going to the center and then this is the only roof that actually opens. So this will slide and it will also tilt up if that's what you wanted to, um, which I think is really cool to have a little bit uh, of like sun um, for your second row passengers. Get your SOS button. This is to turn the driver light on. That is to turn the passenger light on. Both of them are LED. Press it on this button will turn on all the interior dome lights. Press on that button, they all turn back off. And then this button right here is to control whether you want the lights to turn on or off when you guys open up the doors. So right now when I open up the doors, the lights will turn on. You can see all the dome lights turn on. However, if I pushed this button down, now when I open up the door, you can see the interior lights do not turn on. Just something I thought I'd point out. And then opening this up, you get a vanity mirror with a vanity light. And then these also slide forwards and backwards. And then really, that's about it for what's going on here. I've got to take this call real quick. All right, back into the video. I had to take that call really quick, but I do want to go over a couple things that I think are pretty cool or just things that come with the Maxima SR. So those things include the 11 speaker Bose sound system. This is a Wi-Fi hotspot capable vehicle. You get those dual panel panoramic roofs, as well as you get the drive mode selector with normal and sport mode. You get active noise cancellation, traffic sign recognition, 360 degree view camera system. The front seats get zero gravity gravity seats, heated and ventilated front seats, and you get a heated steering wheel. Now I'm gonna throw the entire window sticker on screen. You guys can take a look at the safety stuff. You guys can take a look at the comfort and convenience stuff. So this thing is basically fully loaded. It's got all the safety features that you guys need. It's got all the comfort and convenience stuff that you guys really need. Um, and you can go over the entire window sticker. But basically I wanna highlight the government safety ratings. You guys get 
five stars in every aspect. So this is a very, very safe vehicle. And then last but not least, I do want to highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2023 Nissan Maxima SR is spec is $45,360. I know that is a good chunk of change, but really for what you get, I think this is a very, very nice value. I mean, it rides very nice. It's got a very comfortable seat. Yes, it does ride a little bit firm, but that's kind of the idea. You know, this is supposed to be a sporty sedan, so you want it to be able to handle well. And if you want it to be able to handle well, then it's going to have to have, I guess, a little bit of, you know, a stiffer suspension, which it does. Uh, but we'll, we'll get into like the handling and stuff um, when we get into the driving portion of the review. But so far, I really, really like this vehicle. And for the price, I think it is a good value. But I do want to show you guys what's going on in those rear seats before we get into the driving portion of the review. So I want to make sure I have the key fob with me just in case. But taking a look at the rear door panel, you guys can see it looks very similar to what you would find in the front from about right here to down here is all black leather wrapped. You get a nicely padded armrest with some burnt orange accent colored stitching. You get your door handle, you get some gray trim. Like I mentioned, you do not get an automatic up or down window in the back. That is what your speaker surround looks like. And then you get a little bit of storage space from about like here back. And then you get a spot you could set a Deer Park water bottle, but it, nothing bigger than a Deer Park water bottle would fit there. But taking a look at the rear seats, this is what the rear seats look like when you first take a look at them. You still, just like the front, you get that Alcantara insert at the center of the seats and then the rest of the seats are leather trimmed. I wanna move this out of the way to that side. And now let's move into these rear seats. So let's see. Honestly, I gotta say that these rear seats are pretty darn comfortable. Yeah, like the seat back itself is, you know, on the firmer side, but they're still very, very comfortable in my personal opinion. Now, one thing about the Maxima is that because it has that sloping roof design, both for the windshield and for the C pillar, you do have a little bit of limited headroom. So I would say if I'm like 6'3", my head's probably gonna be hitting the roof, but me being 5'9", I've got still quite a bit of headroom left over. So if you're 5'10", 5'11", I'd say 5'11 is probably the tallest you really want to be in these rear seats. Uh, but you guys can see I am 5'9", I am adjusted behind myself. I've got plenty of knee room, I've got plenty of leg room. And like I mentioned, I've got a touch of headroom left over. You get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat. You get a seat back pocket behind the passenger seat. You also get a center fold down armrest with a spot you can set a phone and you have two cup holders. And then the armrest itself is leather wrapped and it is also nicely padded. You get two HVAC vents, you get a USB-C port and and a USB-A port. And then you also get an Opu panel on the passenger side. You get an Opu panel over here on the driver's side. And then you have your dome light right here. You get another dome light over there. And then again, you have that pano roof for your second row passengers. But really that about does it for these second row seats. You know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of the Maxima SR. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So. I will see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, guys, and now onto the driving portion of the review where I guess I'm just gonna put it in sport mode and see how fast we can go. It's got a nice induction note to it. I mean, it really sounds really good. I love the way that it sounds. Now I'm gonna test out the paddle shifter response. All right, let's give it a little bit of gas. Honestly, like for what it is, it's pretty responsive. Like, could it be more responsive? Yes. Let's see it one more time. All right, now I'm gonna give it a gas. Okay, so it does behave like a CVT, but it sounds really good. And the initial like torque that you guys get when you initially put in, like the throttle response is really good, but like, it has quite a bit of torque, like when you first put your uh, foot into the gas, like honestly, I was surprised uh, by how well, or I guess how quickly it put the power down. Like as soon as I the put my foot into the throttle, like it just went, like it picked up and it went, like it really has some nice get up and go to it. And I really like the throttle response to it, which kind of leads me into my next point, which I already brought up once before or twice before, is that it's going to be really sad to see Nissan do away with the Maxima. I guess I can understand if they're not selling them, then there's no reason 
to be or to continue selling them but like i don't understand how they're not selling these because they look really good they're really comfortable they handle well like there's no body roll really when i do that and they look like i i just i don't understand i guess maybe the cvt has something to do with it but honestly like yeah the interior like could have better quality like products i guess you could say but the reality is it's more than nice enough for me like I could drive this vehicle every day and be happy with the way that the interior looks, be happy with the way that it drives. Like I mentioned, yeah, I really wish that it would have had an automatic transmission and maybe that would have helped the Maxima because really the reality is the Maxima is supposed to be the sporty sedan that Nissan, Nissan makes. This is the flagship sports sedan for Nissan. So I'm, I'm kind of curious as to why they would put a CVT in it if they're going to make it have like a really nice engine to it, a really nice sound really nice like steering feel i mean i guess the steering feel is kind of numb but it's pretty direct and the handling is really good like it took like there was no body roll around that turn and i took that turn rather aggressively um so really the suspension is great like very like there's no body roll really like this thing handles really really well it's just the cvt i think is what was the death of the maxima sales wise now i'm gonna be really angry if nissan comes back with a maxima nameplate as a crossover electric vehicle or something like that and be like really because there still is a niche and there still is a place for a sporty sedan in the United States. It's just you have to make it a sporty sedan if you're going to call it a sporty sedan. So really Nissan you have your engine game down it's a great engine throttle response is great you have the sporty look on the exterior you have the sporty look here on the interior while the interior remains comfortable you know you have these column mounted paddle shifters which look great but they're also great for sporty driving so why did you put a CVT in it you know I honestly like for it being a CVT it's pretty good you know what I'm saying like like if I put myself and I take a step back okay I'd be like okay for CVTs is it good or is it not good and for a CVT honestly it's pretty good but for a sports sedan it's kind of lacking a little bit but that being said if this was going to be just my daily driver like I'm not buying this as a sports sedan like I'm not comparing this to like a scat pack I'm not comparing this to something of that nature then honestly for a daily driver you want something that's a sporty looking you want it to have a sporty feel um, but it doesn't really need to be like insanely sporty then i think this is a great vehicle for those people who are looking for that but if you're looking for you know one vehicle that's going to be your daily that's also going to be insanely fast not insanely fast but rather fast um then ah, this isn't like super super fast but it is quick um, the only neg again is the CVT if they did not put a CVT in this and they put like an 8-speed automatic I really do think that this thing would have sold like crazy. You know what I'm saying because it looks good. It rides good It's comfortable um, And overall it's just it is a great vehicle and I'm, I'm honestly I'm sad to see it go Because really it is a great vehicle at the end of the day It just if they're gonna be marketing it as a sporty vehicle then they have to put an automatic transmission in this thing. They cannot put a CVT in something that they call their sport sedan flagship, you know, vehicle. You know, they just can't do that. But overall, it rides really nice. Like, honestly, if I were looking at a sedan like this, I would, this would be a strong contender for me because it really is that good. It is a great sedan. It is a great daily driver. It looks great. It drives great. Um, and it's also really comfortable and you know it's comfortable if you have kids like if you have kids that are you know shorter than five foot ten they're gonna be comfortable in those back seats as well and you know you got plenty of connectivity you get the wired CarPlay you get the wired Android Auto um, so this overall is a great looking vehicle but it's also a great driving vehicle and if you guys are interested in this particular one I'll have Mostafa's information in the description box down below but that's it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button I'm really trying to hit 10,000 subscribers and I cannot do that without your guys help maybe by the time this video has gone up maybe we have hit 10,000 subscribers but as of right now we're about 300 away from here 
hitting 10,000. So if you guys did enjoy the video, please again, give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. But again, that's it for today's video. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.